In this lesson, we will study about iterators, which are a very important component of C++ STL. So let's see what are iterators. So these are objects that enable us to traverse containers in some order for either reading or writing. And iterators are defined as templates in C++ and they must comply with a very specific set of rules in order to qualify as one, one of the many types of iterators. And we will shortly look at all the different types of iterators and what rules are required for uh, them to being qualified as in that type of iterator. So one question that may naturally come to you is that are pointers and iterators the same thing? So a short answer would be no, but let's see why. Of course, there are some, uh, some things that are common to them. So pointers are variables and these can be uh, indirected to refer to some memory location. A, a pointer, however, meets the requirements for many types of iterators. So we can say that Pointers are one particular type of iterator. The same happens with integers. So when uh, acting as indices to arrays, these integers are iterators for that particular application, but they are essentially discrete numeric values. So integers also qualify as, as iterators of some type. So in short, uh, we can say that iterator is a higher level abstraction of elements that can be used to traverse containers, whereas pointers and integers are a special types of iterators not suitable for every container. Now let's look at the different types of iterator and the different capabilities of these iterators. We will come back to this slide when we have read about all of these so that we are able to summarize. So there are five types of iterator in C++ and this order is important. I have listed in, in this order. So these two are the ones with smallest or least capabilities and these have least uh, requirement in order to implement them. So input iterator, output iterator, forward, bidirectional, random access. And these are uh, very clear from their names, although we will look at them in detail. And all the containers require their iterators to comply with the capabilities of some of these types. Some are rather relaxed, some are more rigorous. So first type is input iterator. So as the name says, these are input iterators, so these are only able to read. So only accessing, not assigning. So if you have done some programming with iterators, you notice that uh, you can dereference them. So either you write star it to dereference them, or if uh, this iterator is pointing to an object uh, of some class, you can access the member values using this arrow operator also. So these are different uh, two ways of uh, dereferencing them or uh, accessing the value. So here we can only access it. So reading this is fine, but when we try to write star it equal to some new value, then this will not be allowed on input iterator. And it only moves forward direction and can be incremented. So you can do plus plus it or it plus plus, it will advance to the next position. So these can be uh, accessed sequentially only. You cannot advance by more amount. So these are allowed, but you cannot go back. These can only move forward. So minus minus it and it minus minus, these are not allowed. Whereas plus plus is allowed. And only one pass is possible. So if you require some algorithm where you need multiple passes, then this would not be suitable for that case. And uh, this is one of the iterators along with output iterator, which has the least requirement support needed for STL. So least uh, capabilities required to implement them. And these are suitable for input streams, such as keyboard buffers or read-only files. And very similar to this, but uh, kind of complemented to this is output iterator. So this is just able to write and not read. So here, if you access it like this, star it equal to, let's say this was uh, some integer value container, then we can assign a value like 10. So this is fine. So here, when we dereference it, it will be dereferenced as L value, whereas in the case of uh, input, it was R value when we dereferenced it. So that's why it was not allowed to assign a new value. And again, uh, this is similar in some sense that it only moves forward. So you can do plus plus, but not minus minus. And only one pass possible and least requirement similar to input. But this was the difference. And these are suitable for output streams, such as screen text or write-only files. 
then the third actuator is forward actuator and it, it has the requirements of both the input and the output but both input and output were moving in forward direction only and it's, it uh, meets the requirement of both of these and this also moves in forward and it's able to read and write both so you can uh, dereference it and either you can read it or write it both are allowed and it supports multiple passes of containers but uh, again uh, uh, it does not mean that you will do minus minus so this is not allowed so suitable for traversing singly linked list since in singly linked list you only need to move forward not backward so you don't need this capability to move backward you are happy with this forward capability and you may want to modify the value in a list so or you may also want to read the current value so you need this functionality so you can uh, straight away relate that if we have input iterator and output iterator and this is forward so you need to inherit from these two so you combine the capabilities of these two and you can form forward iterator now let's look at the fourth one so it combines all the capabilities of forward iterators so this naturally means that all the capabilities of input and output are also combined since forward already combined these capabilities and this combines the capabilities of forward iterators and additionally allow backward traversal so now you can do minus minus and it's suitable for doubly linked list where you may need to go forward as well as backward then the next one so you are uh, noticing that the iterators are becoming more and more powerful now and finally we have the most versatile one it's called random access iterator so it combines the capabilities of all the previous iterators that is bidirectional iterator and then it additionally provides random access by means of indexing so random access was not present in any of those and these are suitable for vectors and similar containers example arrays so now as promised let's come back to this slide now we will summarize it so we can draw a diagram like this so this is input iterator this is output iterator in order to implement forward we need to combine the capabilities of these two then bidirectional one further makes it more powerful it combines all the capabilities of forward plus backward traversal and finally we have random access iterator so it takes all the uh, features all the capabilities of this bidirectional and additionally allows random access so these were the different types of iterators we will uh, have a mode lesson on iterators where we will discuss some of the functions of iterators